Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we're mainly focused on the construction of the Mir space station around the moon. We had previously launched a core module but it had some problems. It was missing at least one solar panel and it could do with a few more RCS thrusters. Unfortunately the first time we launched a mission to send those via Kerbal inventory system uh, that failed because we didn't have enough Delta V, so I decided to add some Atlas V boosters, which you see the coupling there, to a Proton rocket here. Uh, so that was unconventional, but it so happened that they fit right in the gaps between the fuel tanks on the first stage. Those are uh, sort of strap-on fuel tanks on the first stage, not actual boosters. But we put boosters on, SRBs, sort of sacrilegious in a way. And uh, we also have a different upper stage where we have that lunar Soyuz there and you see the KIS container and also a Briz stage to get us into orbit around the moon. Uh, on In the place of the third stage of Proton is a stage with four RD0146s which are sort of like the Russian RL10s and they are on a Vulcan Centaur X stage. So it's a weird amalgam of things. But anyway, so here we are trying to make orbit, and that is successful. And this time, with the help of those AJ-60A boosters, I think they are, um, we managed to get enough Delta V to transfer to the moon safely, and we are doing that. During the Proton launch, I did fail to hot stage properly, so apologies for that. Here we are completing this burn just enough there on the stage and actually we'll use the stage again in order to do a correction burn which is what I'm plotting here still this correction burn does not exactly get us into a great position to rendezvous with the mere core module because it's in sort of a weird polarish orbit and those are always hard to rendezvous to you get a certain opportunity each month kind of thing and transferring from Baikonur also causes problems because uh, it's at a higher inclination than the moon. Anyway, here we've lit the pseudo bridge, bridge stage. I need a name for this where I replace the Briz vernier thrusters with actual Briz engines to reduce the burn time. But here we are capturing around the moon and doing some fine tuning there. And then we have to do this crazy maneuver to basically flip. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, we have to try and go from an equatorial orbit to a polar orbit. It's weird. So here we go doing that burn. And then the target matching burn here. We're just matching velocities with the mirror core. And there is the mirror core. So we've got these two kerbals approaching. and we are docking. You can see the single solar panel. Now the mirror core module starts off with two solar panels and eventually gets a third solar panel when they realize they don't have enough power uh, and it gets its third solar panel after the next module gets added to mirror. I mean this is in real life uh, it gets a third uh, solar panel when the Kavant 1 module gets attached to mirror. Okay, so we are docking here. Slightly different docking port models, so I was a bit nervous about whether they would dock or not, but they're identified in the game as the same kind of docking port. So... Uh, uh, after a little bit of... Except one's a probe side and one's a drogue side, so there is that difference, but they do attach and we're good. And I decided to separate off this uh, spent Briz stage. Unfortunately, I didn't realize we didn't have an independent control module on it. So it's just left adrift. I was hoping to deorbit it, but that was not possible. What I thought was a control module was instead a procedural tank there. Okay, so next up we needed to send the Kvant 1. And actually, I'm not entirely sure why we needed to send Kavant 1 before doing the EVA. Maybe because we didn't have an engineer among the two Kerbals that we sent? That would be weird, but 
Uh, or I decide that since we're going to be attaching that third solar panel to the mirror core, we should attach the command one module first just to make sure things are in order. Uh, it's been a while since this live stream. This is all from a live stream. And at this point, I know that there is a Kerbal called Nauskerman who does the EBA. And I don't know where Nauskerman actually entered the picture. It's possible that Kavant 1 here does not have an IVA view, but Nauskerman is on board. Well, uh, not on board this one, I should say. Because something is about to happen. I'm going to try and separate the fairings. And that goes badly. These fairings, they look good, but it's not a good idea to try and separate them on the way up. I forgot to mention that the module is, of course, being delivered by an uh, Energia rocket with an upper stage and a top payload, or you could call it a Vulcan rocket, a V U L K A N, the Soviet Vulcan. Uh, with only four boosters, Vulcan only has eight. So that is the model rocket that we are going with. Not model rocket as in really tiny rocket, I mean model as in type of rocket. Off go the boosters. Yeah, I mean I don't see Nauskerman here either. Well, we'll find out. So here we are making orbit. And, well, okay, not quite making orbit. We'll need the Vesuvius upper stage, that's what it's called, to finish that. We get rid of the fairing safely this time. And the Vesuvius upper stage is the one with the RD-57, which I fixed the plume on for this mission, for uh, this stream. So now it does have a plume. Yay. RD-57M. And after it makes orbit, of course, we have to do the transfer burn. It's got plenty of Delta V. Kvant 1 is not very heavy. It's a uh, working compartment, basically. It's got some science equipment and stuff like that. So there's a transfer burn. And then a correction burn, a pretty hefty correction burn. I'm not sure, it might be because we're launching from Baikonur. Or maybe I was just doing it wrong at this point. Uh, I've, I think I've refined my polar rendezvous techniques a bit in the course of doing the solar system tourism. But this is also a curious situation where the target station is in a low orbit. And actually for the polar orbits, it might be better if it's in the higher orbit, I don't know. Still, I mean, it's doable. It doesn't seem like we're really pressed. Incidentally, I put an extra KIS container on this that's in the fairing there. And I also added RCS ports so it could rendezvous. This is an odd contraption, actually. This is obviously not how they delivered Gavant 1. Um, we've got the Briz stage in the tail and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I think now Skirman is on board, but there's just no IVA view, so it's not producing a portrait. And I think maybe the reason we brought this over is because uh, we needed an engineer, but again, it's been a while. So here we are docking. And you can see two portraits there. I just, uh, the ones that were in that Soyuz, that lunar Soyuz. Here I'm transferring propellant into it because we'll eventually ditch that bridge stage. And then I I think I moved an Auskerman from the Kvant 1 into the Mir core and then EVA'd her. So she is doing her engineer thing, but I find out that her uh, internal inventory was not large enough for the solar panel. And I decided to fix that. So we aborted the EVA. I adjusted Kerbal inventory system so that her internal inventory could carry the solar panel. It's a bit of a cheat, but uh, for my convenience. Uh, quality of life, if you will. So she can now carry 2,000 liters, and I don't know whether that's reasonable or not, but uh, it will help. So I place the solar panel, however, however, what you'll see is I try to extend it via during the EVA. So I have now Skirman extended, but then 
I the, see there was an option there that said extend panel, but it went away because we got out of range of that option. It is uh, there's a certain distance you have to be in order to extend the panel, and so I accidentally clicked disassemble part, and uh, fortunately I res was able to restore the persistent file to an earlier state. Uh, that was just before that and we were able to place the panel properly and this time I decided not to risk extending the panel while on EVA. Uh, so here we're taking RCS ports from that uh, shroud around the Kavant 1 and placing them on Mirkor because Mirkor lacked sufficient maneuverability. I didn't put enough RCS ports on it. It was not in the best state as far as being able to turn itself or certainly not dock with something else. So we've got those attached now and now the third panel and that goes there. So this was added later, well added now. I mean uh, in real life it was added after the fact. So, exiting the panels with Nauskerman on board now. Inside the mirror core. Very calm sort of extension animation, and then the extension for the third panel as well. Alright, so that's all looking good, and we separate off that shroud and the bridge stage, uncovering Kavant 1's docking port. And we often use that docking port for visiting crafts, so it is an important one. Anyway, next up we launch Kavant 2, which is the next module that gets it added to Mir. It is a TKS based module, which means it has a different form factor than the uh, Mir core kind of module, which is a DOS module. They're made by different uh, manufacturers, I guess you could say, bureaus. So. This one uh, has an EVA airlock, which is good. Uh, the mirror core obviously had an airlock, which is what now Skirman went through. So off go the boosters. And here we are at the end of the core stage, a little bit shorter than the previous launch. And that is because it is a heavier module. Unfortunately, we had a bad ignition situation there. I decided not to activate engine like that. It's better to do it via staging so that the gimbling is more certain to work. I moved the RCS up just in case we had a faulty situation where the staging wanted to skip a, uh, a stage if it thought that the bottom one was actually already activated. Sometimes that happens. Okay, so we recovered that. And it made orbit. And the fairings do their weird fairing thing and we still have enough to transfer so we do. So in real life Mir of course was built around the earth and the core module was launched in February of 1986, Kvant 1 March of 1987 and Kvant 2 this module November of 1989 all on Proton Ks. We'll be continuing the construction of Mir around the moon in the next video in Solar System Tourism. Uh, I had previously uh, taken all these events and turned it into a mere construction video, a special one, uh, but I decided to redo the explanation in context of the Solar System Tourism series, so this is where it all happened. And the method of getting all these together ultimately ends up being the same. We capture around the moon loosely, we correct inclination at a high position around the moon, and then we do a target velocity matching burn. And so that's the technique we are going with. In this case we let go of the bridge stage earlier and let it deorbit. This time I made sure to get that avionics ring. You see the avionics ring uh, happens to be shaped exactly like that procedural tank I decided to put on, so that's why I was fooled. Uh, but now this bridge can uh, control itself because it has the proper avionics part. And the Kavant 2 also can control itself like most, I think, all Soviet modules do. Okay, so deorbiting. 
the superfluous stage and docking Kavan 2. Now a bit of a spoiler, ultimately I decided to build a sort of lunar gateway around the moon in a high elongated orbit, uh, an eccentric orbit. And so we end up with three stations around the moon. Mir, the Almaz station with its scope that we hardly ever use, that station, but that was a test for this. And then also a lunar gateway sort of deal. So... Yeah, we've got more stations around the moon than we strictly need. But anyway, uh, we've got the antenna out and that's how it all looks. So that's how it was at the end of this play session. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.